Hello to netizens, this is Doc East here for the second installment of Tome, Let's Unlock Everything. Last time we unlocked the Reaver class, somewhat fraudulently, seeing as it was unlocked because <clears throat> we had uh, managed to kill a single humanoid instead of the thousand you're supposed to kill. But, you know, whatever works. This time around, we're going to take advantage of our good fortune and see if we can't play a Reaver. We're going to go with the Shalor. Even though they have a strength penalty, which doesn't help us very much, they do get a magic boost, which compensates. And they have very nice racials, which is why they get minus one life per level and 25% experience penalty when compared to the Kornak. Their racials are very nice. So, we'll just dab with the second. Go. Stats are, of course, immediately to go into strength. And I am not an expert, by the way, in practically anything, but I can have fun. So we're going to ignore Bone for now. Bone Shield is fantastic, and Bone Grab is also very nice, but we can't get that to level 4, so we don't really care. So what we're going to do is Pump Drain, put a point in Virulent Diseases, Reven Combat. Corrupted Strength is very important, as that allows us to offhand one-handed weapons, which normally you can only offhand daggers or mine stars or whips. For the dagger user, the mine star user, and the exotic weapon user, respectively. And as an additional bonus, every time we cast a spell, we get a free melee attack for less than full damage at this level, but when we pump that up a bit, we'll soon be wanting to cast spells just to get the bonus damage rather than bump attack. And our generic point over here, because our strength is so low, we can't stick it into say weapons mastery or even armor training yet so we're gonna go with willful tormentor just as a place to store the point until we can spend it somewhere else now we are vim users which makes us magic arcane users which means we can't go anti-magic but that's fine because we want to do some arcane unlocks anyway and the first thing you always do as a floor is leave because they have the hardest starting area and we're gonna to go to the easiest starting area instead <clears throat> Once we spend some time there, we can come back. Welcome to Norgos's lair. And by the way, it's not true that you have to leave. Shalor start with a shield rune, which is extremely powerful. And that'll help you get through that hard starting area. But we're going to stick light. Or train is our first talent. Yeah, we're dual wielding iron axes. Side note, since the offhand gets half damage, you want to make sure your main hand's doing more damage, which it is in this case. Uh, our little disease does not take a turn to use, which means it won't provoke that free attack, but we can use it and also bump attack if we want. It does take a little of our Vim to use and like Drain, which restores Vim. But it's instant speed and it'll do a nice little debuff, which can, at this level, quickly kill the enemy. So, even later, if you're faster than the enemy, or as fast as the enemy, you can use it to kite them. We'll take our Cruel Elm Vile Staff, although we won't use it yet. We are not, despite the fact that we share most of our trees with Corruptors, who are special spellcasters, we are not spellcasters in that sense. We use weapons. And, oh, important thing when you're a floor, which I'd forgotten to do, auto-use when enemies are visible your first racial, which boosts your speed for a number of turns, and is completely instant. So doing that allows us to get away with a speed boost for 8 turns when we first encounter any enemy, and then it will restore when we rest. Going faster means killing better. Some players will say there's no reason to put that on autocast, we can just use it when we want it. And you can't guarantee that we'll have it when we want it if we put it on autocast. On the other hand, if you're careful when you play, 
You're almost always going to use it as soon as you see the enemy anyway. In our case, partly to help us close with the enemy. Ooh, fantastic armor, which we are a long way from using. Incidentally, this is not always the easiest zone. There are two versions of it, and one of them has ice elementals wandering around, which are quite nasty. And we are encumbered. Shame we have to get rid of any lightning resistance gear, but iron we're going to find better anyway. There's actually no reason for me to pick up everything I find, so I will not. Eventually we'll get a transmogrification chest which handles all that for us. Presumably we kill a non-dwarf boss, but you know. I thought I was going to kill even a dwarf boss. Alright, important note, you can always float points. Well, not always. For instance, armor training has a permanent alteration of the world clause, so you can't suck points out of it once you put them in. And, you know, save your changes. But... The fact that we put... I never actually used that, but I didn't need to because I don't have anything that takes Vim. Except my disease, which doesn't hard, take hardly any. So that lets us put all that there. And over here we extend the range of Blight again. Or Drain again. Sorry, he does Blight damage, so I keep calling it Blight, but it's Drain. And... We are not Archers. We are Spellcaster Warriors. Of pure evil. Notice my high speed when I see an enemy, which I can rest to restore to myself between fights. Shalor are extremely powerful if you take advantage of their powers. Some people say Thalor are more powerful, and that's certainly not something you can say isn't true. Their experience penalty is worse, but when it comes to sheer spellcasting, it's hard to beat a Shalor, because no one else gets a magic bonus to start with. The fact that we're only half spellcasters kind of hurts us, but you know, not so much as you'd notice. Alright, I'm getting beaten on, so I'm going to turn on my instant speed runic shield. Only 100 damage, it doesn't scale with anything because it's a starter rune, but we'll upgrade it as the game goes on if we get that far. Alright, a very nice one-hander weapon, and we are always on the lookout for those. Plus 5 mine, plus 5 lightning damage. Note that it only does 11 to 15.4 main damage, which means we actually are going to put it in our offhand. Where the bonus damage doesn't get reduced. Eh, yeah, armor upgrade. But the main, hit, main damage does. And you can see we hit for, oh, 2 mine and 5 lightning. It's unusual. Does bonus damage get reduced? No, it doesn't. 5 and 5, even in the offhand. Some enemies resist certain kinds of damage, though. So. Really should have picked that up, it didn't do any good. Once you get the transmogrification chest, every time you move over an item, it'll automatically suck it up and then sell it when you leave an area, unless you decide to actually put it in your inventory. So. Alright, zone three. We're about to face our first non dwarf boss. Hopefully, we'll have a transmogrification chest for us. Arcing weapons will sometimes send off some arcing damage, which is quite nice. I don't believe, yep, clarifying is not anti-magic, so we are going to take our bonus to magic. 
and our mind resistance, which is, you know, practically useless, and our confusion immunity, which is not useless. Alright, keep bumping strength. More than even normal Reavers, I need to bump strength because I have a penalty to it. More drain. Note that the two points of magic we got from our necklace is helping us bump our drain. You don't need to have the skill or the ability innately, you can get it from equipment. You want to bump up your skills. And here comes the bear himself. Shrugs off the effects of the disease. Bosses have nice saves. I hit him to make him bleed and do damage. I hit him again. Oh, I got afflicted by the disease. And it's just stun me anyway. I'll throw up a shield. Hit him with the disease again. There we go. And I'm encumbered again. Serpent's Glare is useless for us. Out of recall isn't. Let's drop some of this heavy stuff. No chest. Maybe I have to kill Bill for it. Which would be a pain. I'll put two points into magic so I can keep buffing my magic. And since I've hit level four, I can now put points into bone grab. Which I'm going to start leveling like mad. And since we don't raise dexterity, we always want to keep combat accuracy maxed. Maybe a turn later than most in getting our armor training up high enough. It doesn't mean we can't upgrade here. Wait a bit. Important thing to remember is that heavy armors, of which mail is, even if you can use it at rank 1 of armor training, get a bonus from armor training armor. Or get armor and whatnot bonuses from our armor training skill. Ooh. Humble rough leather gloves of strength. Very nice. They will raise our darkness damage, which we do a little bit of. Not right now, but we will. Give us darkness damage to do, raise our physical power and our armor, and raise our strength, which lets us shift points around. Here from more weapon damage into our armor training, which lets us put on our massive, massive armor. Start to soak some hits. Important point. We are not raising constitution yet. Which anyone who's experienced in this game will tell you is not necessarily a good thing. In fact, it could be a very bad thing. It's one of the disadvantages, actually, of playing a shower is your need to get your strength up at the expense of things like constitution. Eventually it evens out when we don't have to raise magic, but still. Alright, let's use our rod recoil we just picked up and get out of here. Now I'm carrying a whole bunch of stuff I don't need, so I can sell it. Having gained five levels, I hate the dog. I should actually download the mod that shuts him up. Uh, 
gonna have to sell the gems because they have no weight. And we're gonna look at. They do not have much for us here, do they? Well, off we go. Now, Reavers, remember, get bonus melee attacks when they cast spells that take a turn, of which we now have a few. We have Drain, we have Bone Grab, and we have our Bone Spear. Bone Spear is a line spell, which is normally worth boosting, and in fact, we're going to be looking for plus percent physical damages because we're using weapons, so... Actually, we're going to be looking for plus blight damage more because that bonus attack is a blight attack. But generally, Bone Spear is not worth pumping unless... You really need a line attack. Even though it's really no. Ooh, covering a blight. Very nice for us. Plus 11% blight damage. It's practically a staff all by itself. At this level. You get Vim restored, by the way, every time you kill something. It's sort of anti-life force. Um, you get more Vim when you raise your level, but there's no willpower does not increase it. Maybe it does, I can't remember. But what when you kill something, your the amount of Vim you get back is based on your willpower. But you also get lots and lots of Vim when you use Drain, which is our primary resource. Okay, we got confused, which confusion doesn't stop you from using instants. So we're going to disease them and shield ourselves. And then try to fight our way through the confusion. Because we also got dazed when he attacked us, it actually turned out to be helpful. We're gonna bonus here him. Purely to get the bonus back. What are we fighting here? Alright, we just finished off two uniques. And got items that we can potentially use. Arcane disrupting we don't want. However, chance to blind on hit, bonus magic, spell save, very nice for us. No troll. You'll learn very quickly to look for the arcane disrupting slash arcane status of any items we equip. Or want to equip. Arcane disrupting does exactly what it says it sounds like it would do. It kills your sustains that are arcane, which are any vim based ones for us. And it disrupts your chances of casting spells. It is, of course, completely harmless and, in fact, often useful to someone who is going anti magic, as it won't disrupt anything for them, and most of them have anti magic properties themselves, which are synergistic with the anti magic strategy. One of the best arcane disrupting items is a pair of gloves. If you find it and you can go anti magic, they pretty much guarantee you will, because of how much they dominate the late game. We do not have a wild infusion to cure physical. I should have paid more attention to that when I was looking at infusions earlier. Dagger, which we do not need because we offhand one handers. For some classes, there's just a certain class of item, often types of items that, even, no matter how good they are, they're not worth looking at. But they are worth selling. Hey, lore. Nice. Good armor, strength and constitution buff. Quite nice. Ah! 
Marksman's Copper Ring of Sensing is going to have Stealth, Destruction, and Accuracy. And Dexterity. Not worth more than either of our existing rings, though. Stakes are really fast, which can be annoying if you're trying to hit them with projectiles. This, by the way, is the harder version of the Trollmeyer. Just like we were lucky to get the easier version of Norgos since later, we're, easy, we're lucky to get the harder version of the Trollmeyer because the rewards are usually better. Incidentally, the blind on hit that we've got equipped, that's new in the latest version. That kind of on hit status effect equipment was not at all common, even when it did exist in the older versions. We are dealing with something that is not normal. Do I have a hat yet? No. I really should have put this on. Ooh, where'd he come from? You, my friend, are not welcome here. And he drops some very nice armor, which I do not feel like I can safely get to. That'll help, though. Lots of people save the level ups. I like to spend them quick. Alright, we have plenty of magic for our purposes, so we'll start buffing our constitution finally. And the second point extends this range from 5 to 8. It takes two more points to get to 9, so whether you go with two points and go and grab or four points is largely dependent on how many points you feel free to spend. Steel plate armor. Spikes with plus two will, which you don't care about, and damage shield penetration, which we do. Overall, much better option. Can't transmute. Why do I keep thinking I can? I'm not going to be reading a lot of lore. We're only really looking for four pieces of it at the moment. Which will be how to be necromancer pieces. If we can get those to our lore repository in the DLC fort, which comes when you pay for the game, it makes getting the necromancer class a lot easier. Onward and upward. Or overward, anyway. Huh. Bit of an out of depth sandworm, but being a sandworm, not exactly a problem. <coughs> Steel Mesa Projection is a tier 2 weapon. Also have this put us over our weight limit. This is really not tell with. Base power is still less than what we've already got. Let alone the bonuses are almost nothing.
You may notice I'm gleefully abusing the Shalor Racial. Better it be on cooldown than never used. Which is generally true of things in this game. Okay. Welcome, Prox. First, I'm going to get into a position where you can push me away if you want. Prox is the only boss in the game that will give you a helping hand. He only does melee attacks, but he'll still try to shove you very far away from him. So if you position yourself right, you can use that to get a bit of a breather. We'll throw up our shield, make you bleed, make you disease. We spell shocked him, which some, is something that quite, happens quite often with the disease, which means his save was not as good as our magic or our spell power. And when spell shocked, your resistances to damage go way down, which means you do a lot more damage to something. His spell shocked. Another reason to use the disease. Crystal focus, tooth of the mouth. Tooth of the Mouth is very good for us. Besides giving a bunch of melee bonuses, it also gives a 4% flight damage bonus. Yay. So, bonus flight when we hit with both weapons, armor penetration, and light percent increase. And the Crystal Focus can be used on any weapon to give it some bonuses. I'm not really impressed with how it well it does, but I still save it for a tier five, first tier 5 weapon I can find. Oh, and we gained a bunch of levels, so... or A-level. Uh, can't do that yet. Incidentally, note that this scales off of magic. Or dexterity, but for us it's magic. So it'll get better and better as the as we... The increasing talent points you spend in these racials often just reduces the cooldown, which is the case here. We don't want to upgrade that. We do want to grab Ruin which causes us to heal ourselves every time we hit an enemy, and also causes bonus flight damage. Wait for the rest of these points to constitution for now. That's a Vim sustain, which reduces our total Vim by 40. Which is a noticeable effect, but it also greatly increases our efficiency and our effectiveness, so... Choke point there. The fact that we get health back on every swing is not to be sneezed at, and it also scales the magic. Especially early on, straight up bonus damage to swings is huge for melee characters. And we just got a whole bunch of it, so. We should feel pretty good, even at level 7, going after Bill. It's not recommended that you go after... If you start in the forest, it's not recommended that you go after Bill first thing. Because he can tear you apart. He's going to charge me in turn, so before you can do that, I grab him. Pin him down. Make him squeal. He's dead. And we got, yeah, he drops the transmogrification chest. Transmogrification chest is absolutely fantastic. First off, we have to pick it up off the ground. Unlock transmogrification chest. Now every character we start will start with a transmogrification chest. It will automatically pick up any items and place them in the chest as we move over them. We can move them from there to our inventory, and as we leave a level, it will vendor everything that's left in the chest. Anything in the chest doesn't have any weight, either. This is important. It's an extension of an ultra tool place of power. That's the DLC fortress. So once we get there, we can actually get more... ...out of... ...our transmogrifications than just money. Which is all we're getting now, but we're getting it. Sorry for the time this takes, and for the rolling troll in the background. You may have noticed I didn't even look at that quiver. Quiver enchantments and, and shot enchantments never have anything useful beyond the effects they give to your bows or your slings. 
Unless you curse them as a cursed, but we're actually going to be unlocking the cursed soon. Probably playing as that next. Incidentally, because this is an unlock mission, I'm not actually going to hold on to the crystal focus. I'm going to use it to unlock archmages. Normally you would pick a different arcane yellow artifact, but the fact that it is arcane and yellow means we can use it, and I doubt we're going to survive long enough to regret having gotten rid of it. It's not that we try and die, of course. Also, it's just not... Other people say it's the best you can do as a one-hander. Well, there are better artifacts out there. We can actually start putting points to magic up with the Eternals now, which is passive. It's the only racial that's not a spell for these guys. And it increases crit chance and crit strike power, which is huge. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. And for our class point, um, I don't really care about that yet. I really don't care about that yet. Vim Sense is nice. Don't care about blood casting. Yeah, these two are worth one point each just to get the life tap. And life tap is still pricey at this point in the game. So, I really don't want more than one point. In <laughs> this entire tree is pretty much boiled down to that one point for a good long time. So we're going to start boosting Corrupted Strength, which both increases the d damage we do when we cast a spell and increases our offhand weapon damage. Incidentally, these are all melee range, but they are spells. That's important to remember. The, the heart and soul of the river. Alright, so I find this dude wandering around, ask him what's going on, and tell him that he can have my crystal focus. Alright, we have we have uncovered the city, which gives us uh, the ability to do a later quest and also an option on spell combat training. Staff combat, sorry, staff combat training, which we're not going to use. Although we could, we can use one-handed stays as well, but it's you have to find the right ones to make it even close to worthwhile. Also unlock the Archmage, easily one of the most overpowered classes in the game, and one that we're going to use to unlock various trees for both the Archmage and other classes. Specifically the Cold Tree. Alright, we have done two of the starting areas of the three we have access to, and we'll abandon the third. We're actually going to keep it good and abandoned until we've finished all the other tier twos. That's how hard that starting area can be. Well, not hard, more annoying. But with that unlock, actually we've reached the half hour mark, so I will say goodbye for now. Tune in next time for more of our Unlock Everything campaign.